आपकी आवाज आ रही है मुझे क्लियर चले मैं शुरू करा रहा हूँ मैं शुरू करा रहा हूँ ठीक है थैंक यू थैंक यू ओके अवर टूडेज टॉपिक इज एंड हेलमेंटिक्स दैट मीन्स द ड्रग्स दैट वी कैन यूज अगेंस्ट द वॉम इन्फेस्टेशन और अगेंस्ट द ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ वॉम्स राइट माई नेम इज डॉक्टर इमरान from the international medical college okay and helminths are drugs used in the treatment of infection with helminths that already we have discussed that worms basically we helminths means worms right in the intestinal tract as well as tissues of the body so and helminths that uh, are responsible Uh, and cause killing of the worms we can label as vermicides and the drugs that help to expel the worms so that can be label as uh, vermifuges right so these are the terms that you know so this is very important uh, slide i must say we have categorized uh, worms into three uh broader groups nematodes also label as round worms trematodes label as flukes and cestodes label as tape worms so recently we have uh, conducted the th uh, third year exam and uh, uh, yesterday was the uh, last day so uh, there was a station related to this and uh, helminths right and the external external they used to ask okay what is the drug of choice uh, in the treatment of round worms some of the external ask okay what is the drug of choice first choice uh, for the tape worms or cestodes so first what you must know these major groups nematodes trematodes and cestodes there are individual worms as well but the first point that you must know is the classification round worms flukes tape worms and their drug of first choices right this is very important okay so this is the relative incidence of uh, helminth infections worldwide the most common the most common uh, scaries lumbricoids that is responsible to cause scariasis and the very interesting point what is that interesting point in pakistan you know in pakistan 17 million of the children between the age of 5 to 15 years having worm infestations and another very uh, important point and you will be shocked that in uh, out of 17 million you know 4.6 million children having worms in karachi right so you can say it's a it's a big city and but again there is a problem sanitation problem right and so this is one of the reason so it's very interesting that in spite of a big city the highest burden if we talk about the whole country so 4.6 million worm infestation in our children 5 to 15 years uh, in especially in karachi and so in pakistan again uh, the highest incidence is caused by uh, scaries lumbricoids just like the uh, uh, worldwide right and second most common in pakistan the worm that is the pin worm and the pin worm is also called Uh, in terobius vermicularis you know worldwide uh, if we count it is on 2 3 4 on fifth number but in pakistan it is on second number highest percentage with scaries lumbricoides just like the uh, entire world but on second number the uh, uh, in terobius vermicularis uh, having the highest incidence of worm infestation in pakistan right so the next slide now one by one intestinal 
round worms that is labeled as nematodes this you must know what are nematodes nematodes are round worms right so in this group we have different worms scaris lumbricoides uh, again the common round worm enchirostoma duodenali that is also labeled as hook worm right and the tricuris tricuria that is also called whip worm which rarely bend crafting that is responsible to cause filariasis and this is one of the condition that occur in pakistan right enterobius vermicularis this is pin worm right strongyloides uh, sercoralis that is also called thread worms and oncocerca vulvulus that is responsible to cause oncocerciasis so these are the uh, common worms intestinal worms labeled as nematodes right so what at least you must know about the three or four or names of this group right is uh, scaris lumbricoides and chirostoma duodenali enterobius rumicularis ushraya bancrofti tricuris tricuria now uh, drug of choice this point already i have shared with all of you that in the recent exam what uh, we conducted uh, in past three or four days so there was always a station right from the infectious module because you know in third year we have uh, infectious module respiratory module cardiovascular module right so there was a station there was a case that was related to worm infestation so the easiest question okay what are the drugs that you can use uh, against the uh, round worms nematodes right so scaries lum records and again i am repeating you know in pakistan not in pakistan but all over the world this is one of the worm that that's incidence or occurrence is highest scaries lum records right round worm so uh, drug of choice in this case mebendazole or parenteral palmoate or albendazole what does it mean that means mebendazole can be given or parenteral palmoate can be given one drug right or means ya to mebendazole ya pe parenteral palmoate ya pe albendazole right there is we haven't mentioned the and and means combination but here individual either you are giving mebendazole and all three drugs are equally effective right against the treatment of scaries lumbricoides mebendazole or parenteral palmoate or albendazole right so this is you know scaries lumbricoides and ankylostoma duodenali hook worm right so against these worms drug of first choice either mebendazole or parenteral palmoate or albendazole right okay and the tricuris tricuria that is whip worm in which mebendazole or albendazole is the drug of choice now this is very important point from the exam point of view okay which really i been crafted that is responsible to cause a disease that is called filariasis and this is one of the commonly asked question in the viva right filariasis is caused by uh ushraya ben crofty and filariasis is also called elephantiasis okay so drug of first choice this is from the bcq point of view very important point that you must remember so in the treatment of filariasis which is caused by ushraya ben crofty the drug of first choice diethyl carbamazine you must remember this the drug of first choice in filariasis which is responsible to cause uh, elephantiasis the drug of first choice is diethyl carbamazine right then in aerobius vermicularis pin worm second highest in pakistan first highest is the scaris lumbricoides and the second highest uh, that is the pin worm in aerobius vermicularis again you can see the same drug mebendazole or parenteral palmoate just like scaris lumbricoides 
But here there is a difference. The strongyloids, the stercoralis, that is threadworms or oncocircular bulbulus, oncocerciasis is the disease. In these two examples, the drug of first choice is ivermectin. So in the subsequent slide, we are going to discuss the mechanism of action of these individual drugs. Okay, the second group that is the trematodes. So if we just revise the important point, okay, if anyone asks, okay, what are the drugs that you can use uh, against the routeworm or nematodes, you will say mebendazole and parental palmoate, albendazole, ivermectin and there is a specific drug diethylcarbamazine which is specifically given in the treatment of filariasis which is caused by vitreria bancroft right so now the second group is the trematodes that is also labeled as flukes schistosoma hematobium schistosoma mansoni these are the different examples right and all of the trematodes this is very easy to remember, right? All the trematodes, except there is one type that is fasciola hepatica, that is the sheep liver flu, in which the drug is different, right? In which drug is different. Otherwise, generally, the drug of first choice against the trematodes, against the flukes, you will say praziquantel, right? This you must know. Praziquantel is the drug of first choice for the treatment of uh, uh, trematodes, flukes, right? Bithionol, that is the specific drug and uh, that is effective against fasciola hepatica, sheep liver flu. But if you don't remember, no problem. But you must remember what? The drug of first choice against the trematode group is praziquantel. The third group, that is the tapeworms and cystodes, in which we have two very important example tinea saginata that is the beef tape form and tinea sodium that is the pork tape form sometimes we get confused okay some of the if you ask pork tape form we say tinea saginata if you ask beef tape form we say tinea sodium no don't get confused you must clear that tinea saginata beef tape form and tinea sodium pork tape form right so in these two, the drug of first choice is the praziquantel. In the past, uh, there was a drug that is labeled as niclosamide. Niclosamide. So in the olden days, niclosamide was supposed to be the drug of first choice against the cystodes. But in a current practice, in the current uh, medical knowledge, now most of the authorities suggest that praziquantel would be more effective against these cestodes. But niclosamide can be given. So that is why we have mentioned both praziquantel or niclosamide. If you say, okay, niclosamide is supposed to be the drug of first choice in cestode, examiner will say, okay, there is another drug that can also be given. Then you will say, okay, praziquantel, right? So now, Last two, cystic sarcosis. What is this? This is very important condition, clinical condition. And that is due to poke tape form larval stage. The larva of the poke tape form is responsible to cause cystic sarcosis, right? And the second one, echinococcus granulosus, hydrated disease. That is label as hydrated disease. And uh, when I was uh, doing my house job in JPMC, I have seen the uh, uh, case of this echinococcus granulosus hydrated disease in which uh, cysts are going to form, right? So uh, this is very important condition, especially in our setup, in Pakistan setup, that is the echinococcus granulosus is responsible to cause which disease? Hydrated disease, right? And what is cystic sarcosis? That is the larva, basically, if the larva is responsible uh, to cause cysts, right? So uh, this larva is from the poke tape form that is called cystic sarcosis. And you must remember the drug of first choice against these two conditions, albendazole, right? Albendazole. 
सो वन इंपॉर्टेंट क्लिनिकल कंडीशन फिलेरियासिस डाइथाइल काबामेजीन and cystic cirrhosis a kind of coccus grelosis which is responsible to cause heart attack disease uh, the drug of first choice is bendazole right and a broader group uh, covered by praziquantel in terms of trematodes not only cover trematodes but also cover tapeworms so i think it is easier to uh, uh, memorize these three or four important points now one by one because this albendazole is uh, supposed to be the very important drug and i just want to recall okay albendazole you know we have mentioned albendazole uh, against round worm it is given here you can see scaris lumbricoides and calisoma duodenali this either mebendazole or parenteral pomade or albendazole so this is one of the use then in the uh cystic cirrhosis and a kind of coccus granulosis again the drug of first choice albendazole so this is very important drug now mechanism of action and this mechanism of action usually mechanism of action and some uh, side effects that we ask in the exam from the uh, if we say from the clinical point of view these two things are important from the exam point of view okay what is the mechanism of action of albendazole so how it's going to uh, affect uh, produces its activity on worms right so drug and its metabolite albendazole self oxide bind to beta tubulin structure of worm and it will inhibit microtubule synthesis so what will happen impairs glucose uptake by the parasite so you are going to block uh it's energy source right impairs glucose uptake by the parasites and parasites are immobilized or die slowly right key points larvicidal effects in hydated disease cystic cirrhosis scariasis and hookworm and it also produces ovicidal effects in scariasis and calistomiasis and trichuriasis right but what what, what is a general point that you must remember it is effective against the scariasis lumbricoid in calistoma duodenali effective against cystic cirrhosis which is the larval stage of oak tree form and it is very much effective against the echinococcus granulosus which is responsible to produce heart attack disease if you know this point i think that is more than enough now pharmacokinetics you know all the uh and helminthics they are given orally right so given orally albendazole is administered on an empty stomach when used against intraluminal parasites but with a fatty meal this is very interesting right because if you will give with fatty meal what will happen maximum drug is going to get absorbed when the drug is going to get absorbed from the intestine so less amount would be available in the intestine but if you are going to treat intestinal worms so maximum concentration is required within the lumen so if less absorption is there that would be uh, beneficial maximally right for uh, luminal worms right so that is why if we give it, uh, it on empty stomach so uh, least absorption from the uh, stomach from the intestine so maximum drug would be available uh within the lumen right so maximum concentration available so maximum activity will produce but if we are going to use albendazole against the tissue like uh, for example the uh, larva which is uh, present in the suppose in the brain and any other tissues right so this drug has to enter into the blood stream so the blood, when the blood will move and will reach the site of action so it can produces its activity so for tissue activity maximum absorption is required and for luminal activity it is better maximum drug would be available within the lumen so least absorption is required okay 
okay produces active metabolite albendazole sulfoxide this active metabolite is widely distributed into various tissues including hydated cyst ye jo main aap logo ko bata raha tha ki ji jo hydated disease hai cyst this condition mein kya hota hai cysts are formed right cysts are formed right so this active metabolite is uh, very much effective and because of its metabolite of albendazole right so that is why it is very much effective against the cystic disease like caused by cystic sclerosis and caused by echinococcus granulosis which is labeled as hydated disease because it can reaches the site of action penetrate the cyst and enter into the cyst adverse reactions when used for 1 to 3 days albendazole is nearly free of significant adverse effects mild and transient epigastric distress diarrhea headache nausea dizziness residue and insomnia in humans rare fatalities due to a granulocytosis or pancytopenia occur during long term use so generally it is devoid of uh, some serious side effects now the second drug uh, that is the mebendazole uh pharmacokinetic the mechanism of action is same that is why i have mentioned the mechanism of action the mechanism of action is just like albendazole uh, it inhibit the activity of uh, tubulin structure so it impair the glucose uptake so uh, when you are going to stop the energy source in that parasite so it will immobilize when there is devoid of energy so ultimately slowly is going to die so same mechanism of action mebendazole and albendazole same mechanism of action right so that is why uh, i have mentioned so pharmacokinetics okay administered orally poorly absorbed from the gi tract so this is a very interesting point so this we we, we are required because if the drug is poorly absorbed so that means the maximum drug will be available within the lumen so maximum activity we can achieve right so highly bound to plasma protein but this mebendazole cannot be used uh, in case of tissue manifestation like we cannot use in case of cystic sclerosis we cannot use against the uh, echinococcus granulosis which is responsible to produce hydated disease in which cysts are formed right why because it cannot crosses the lipid bilayer so max uh, poor absorption but it would be effective for the uh, luminal or intestinal worm infestation right like uh, scaries the reports that already we have mentioned in the uh, initial slides where we can use mebendazole as drug of first choice metabolize in the liver most of the drug is excreted in feces and does not require fasting or purging purging means sometimes after uh, starting the uh, anti alimentic drugs because worms are immobilized or die but they they are remain in the uh, lumen and when the luminal activity or peristaltic activity or with the normal uh, uh, evacuating activity bowel evacuating activity so it will be evacuated slowly so if we want to clear the lumen of immobilized worm or uh, dying worm we can use the purgatives right purgatives or laxative that enhances the peristaltic activity so we can uh, quickly uh, clear the uh, immobilized worms or dying worms from the intestine okay adverse effects systemic toxicity is low uh, and that is the uh, logical point and uh, again this is one of the beneficial point this concept you must clear this concept because anything which is enter into the blood so blood will move throughout the body so increase chances of side effects but the drug if drug is poorly absorbed that means the local effect is maximum and the systemic effect is minimum right so mainly the side effects related to that local activity that means the main side effects would be related to gi disturbance 
rarely cause anorexia, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and abdominal discomfort. Occasionally, may cause skin rashes, itching, drug fever, etc. Contraindicated in pregnancy and children below one year. This is important point of mavendazone. Now, this parental palm oil again because in Pakistan the most common roundworm or nematodes in the beginning I told you and again I am repeating that is the scaris lumbricoids and in the initial slide I have mentioned the drug of first choice against the scaris lumbricoids either we can give mebendazole or parental palmoate or albendazole right so we have discussed the mebendazole we have discussed the albendazole now we are discussing parental palm oil. okay what is the mechanism of action and already i told you uh, as far as the anti drugs are concerned mechanism of action is important and some important clinical indication like already i've mentioned the drug of first choice in hydrated disease this is commonly asked question, which is caused by Kinetococcus granulosus, albendazole, which is the drug of first choice in uh, 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 cystic cirrhosis, which is caused by the larva of the proteum. Again, albendazole is the drug of first choice. What is the drug of first choice in the treatment of filariasis, which can cause uh, also called uh, elephantiasis, which is caused by Bushreria bancrofti, diethyl carbamazine. So these points you must remember. So, parental palm oil mechanism of action, it stimulates nicotinic receptors, that is the direct effect, and inhibits choline esterase activity, increase acetylcholine concentration, so persistent depolarization. So, powerful contraction, so it will lead to spastic paralysis, right, and worms are expert. So, in short, parental palm oil producing its activity by stimulating nicotinic receptor and increase activity of acetylcholine that will lead to powerful depolarization or contraction. So, it will lead to paralysis of the worms. So, parental is parental palm oil is effective against mature and immature forms of susceptible helminths within the intestinal tract but not against migratory stages in the tissues or against ova, right? So just like mebendazole that cannot be used against the uh, uh, tissue uh, uh, tissue level or parental palm oil, so it will produce its activity within the lumen. If there is a need to use the drug, that suppose there is a larva reaches the brain and in brain it forms the cyst, right? In ocular tissue it forms the cyst, so sometimes it may cause blindness. So in that situation, the drug which can cross the lipid bilayer, which, which are able to get absorbed from the GIT, can enter into the systemic circulation, then it can reach the site of action, right? So albendazole has the property of this, but mebendazole and parental palm oil, they have poor absorption, so the maximum effect we will get uh, if we are treating it against the intestinal worms, not against the tissue level. Clear? Pharmacokinetics given orally, again this point, poorly absorbed, and this is the reason we cannot use uh, as a systemic drug. 80 to 90 percent is excreted in the faces and doesn't require fasting or purging. So, uh, in, uh, if it, so that is why in the recent past, this drug was supposed to be the drug of first choice in Pakistan for scariest glimericoids because there is no need to uh, give the uh, laxative or purgatives after using this parental palm oil. Adverse effects, well tolerated. This is another reason of using this. May cause nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, headache, dizziness, skin rashes and fever contraindicated in infants. Okay, diethyl carbamazine, you know, this drug is supposed to be the drug of first choice in which condition? Flariasis, which is caused by Bushraria bancrofti and that this flariasis is also 
responsible to cause a condition that is called elephantiasis and mechanism of action diethylcarbamazine immobilizes microflare which results in their displacement in tissues right so alters their surface structure making them more susceptible to destruction by host defense mechanism so basically diethylcarbamazine immobilizes microflare right because when there is no movement of macroflurry, so we can minimize its transportation. So uh, it is it would be difficult to reach the different tissues, right? So pharmacokinetics well absorbed from GIT, widely distributed in the body, metabolized in the liver, and is created in urine. Safe for use during pregnancy. Urinary alkalosis or renal impairment may require dose reduction. Adverse effects, drug induced effect. Okay, sometimes very interesting point. Sometimes when the parasites are dying, they are releasing some substances which are responsible to cause the some serious side effects. So that is why that would be labeled as the parasite induced reaction, right? The side effect that is due to drug itself and the second reaction or side effect that is not due to drug, but when we kill the uh, worms, so dying worms, they are releasing some substances and that are responsible to produce some serious side effect. So that is called parasite induced reaction. So first we discuss drug induced effects, reactions to diethylcarbamazine itself are mild and transient and it start within two to four hours. Headache, malaise, anorexia, and weakness are frequent. Nausea, vomiting, dizziness, and sleepiness occur less often. Parasite-induced reaction. Now, this is important from the exam point of view, right? BCQ point of view. Uh, Parasite-induced reaction as a result of the release of foreign proteins from dying microflare or adult worms in sensitized patients. That means not in every patient, but in sensitized patient. This reaction is termed as Mazzotti reaction. This you must know, okay? So Mazzotti reaction basically uh, is the reaction that is uh, induced by parasite dying uh, uh, worms. And when we use especially diethylcarbamazine uh, for immobilizing the activity of microflare. And what are the characteristic features and what you will absorb in Mazzotti reaction? Mazzotti reaction characterized by fever, skin, rashes, and myalgia, malaise, headache, and arthralgia. Isonophilia and leukocytosis are usually intensified, right? So this is important Mazzotti reaction. This you must know. Now, Ivermectin. Can you recall something when we say ivermectin? Because there are two conditions in which ivermectin is supposed to be the drug of first choice. Here you can see from the initial slides, the strongyloids, the sarcoralis, thread worms, right? And oncocerca vulvulus, oncocercaeases. So these are out of these two, this uh, strongyloids, the sarcoralis or thread worm infection that is important, the drug of first choice is ivermectin. So these are the two conditions in which ivermectin can be used as a drug of first choice. So mechanism of action of ivermectin, potentiate glutamate gated chloride channels. So also increases uh, GABA transmission in worms. So all these two mechanism, what it will lead to? It will lead to hyperpolarization and paralysis of the worms, right? Very two important point. Paralysis occur if you are going to avoid the process of depolarization and contraction. When there is no contraction, there is no movement. This is one of the mechanism of paralysis. Or you can you can produce paralysis by exhausting the muscles, and that we will achieve by enhancing the process of depolarization. What we have discussed in case of uh, stimulating nicotinic receptor, increased contraction that will 
be responsible to exhaust the muscle and it will cause paralysis. And second mechanism could be to uh, inhibit the process of depolarization. So there is no movement and this we can achieve by producing hyperpolarization, right? So hyperpolarization and paralysis of the worms that is caused by avermectin. It can be given orally, rapidly absorb. If absorption is good, that means we can use this against the tissue uh, infestations, right? Tissue level. So rapidly absorb, widely distributed in various tissues, metabolized in the liver, excreted mainly in the faces, contraindicated in pregnancy and children. This ivermectin. Adverse reaction in strong alloyed acid treatment, infrequent side effects if we are treating against the strong alloys, right? So fatigue, dizziness, nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, rash, but these are not common. So we are not concerning with these. But in oncosarcosis treatment, adverse effects are the mazoti reaction, right? Just like what we have discussed in diethyl carbamazine, uh, adverse effects, right? So mazoti reaction includes fever occasionally, intermittent for several days, headache, dizziness, somnolence, weakness, rash, increased pruritus, right? So these are the different characteristic features. But mazoti reaction is more specific, more related to diethyl carbamazine. Now this praziquantel. So what you can recall by just uh, seeing this uh, uh, drug praziquantel and already I told you the major group in which this drug is supposed to be the drug of first choice that is trematodes. And another important point already we have discussed and most of the authorities suggest not only it is supposed to be the drug of first choice against the trematodes, but also it is supposed to be the drug of first choice against the cystodes, right? But there is another drug that can also be used in the treatment of cystodes, that is the neclozamide. So this praziquantel is a very important drug, right? So what is the mechanism of action? Drug increases cell membrane permeability to calcium. So you must remember the mechanism of action of this uh, praziquantel and how it's going to produce its activity against the worms. It increases cell membrane permeability to calcium. So resulting in vacuolization, marked contraction again, you know, calcium is responsible to produce the contractility. So marked contraction and paralysis and dislodgement and death. Right? So pharmacokinetic of this praziquantel rapidly absorb after oral administration. Okay, this is very interesting point uh, that already we have discussed anything which is responsible or which, which has the ability to get absorbed so can be used for the uh, systemic infection, the uh, worms either in the form of larva or forming cysts in the different tissues, these drugs can be used because it can, uh, it has the ability to get absorbed into, into the bloodstream and from the blood it can reach the different sites where cysts are formed due to uh, different larva of different worms, right? So it can cross the blood brain barrier, high level occurs in the bile extensively, metabolize in the liver, Metabolites are inactive and excreted in urine and bile, contraindicated in pregnancy, and ocular cysticercosis. Because if uh, this drug, you know, cysticercosis, already we have discussed very important clinical condition, but fortunately not common in Pakistan. But because we are not using pork uh, uh, meat, so pork tapeworm, this is Oak tapeworm larva is responsible to produce the cyst in different tissue that is called the cysticercosis. So suppose cyst form in the ocular tissue due to larva form of oak tapeworm. So if we use this praziquantel, it will kill the 
break down the cyst. So when the cyst uh, is ruptured, chemical mediators are released and chemical reaction. So it may cause the blindness. So that is why praziquantel is contraindicated in ocular cystic sarcosis. This is important, important. Adverse effects, common adverse effects include headache, dizziness, drowsiness, and malaise. Less frequently, gastrointestinal irritation, skin rashes, and fever. Neurologic effects can occur in the treatment of neurocystic sarcosis, including intracranial hypertension and seizure. Because it can cross the blood brain barrier, so it can reach the brain. So uh, it is important point because if you want to treat at the brain levels, so it would be effective. But at the same time, you know, if the drug is going to produce its activity, that side is also involved in the activities related to side effects or adverse effects. Now this niclozamide, and already I told you the drug of first choice in the treatment of which group? Sestoid group, right? Sestoid group. But uh, praziquantel is also preferred. So both drug can be given either praziquantel or niclozamide, right? So the scoliosis and segments of cystodes, but not over, are rapidly killed on contact with niclozamide. Through which mechanism? Because inhibition of oxidative phosphorylation or to its ATPase stimulating property. With the death of recite, digestion of scoliosis and segment begins. Pharmacokinetics minimally absorb from the gastrointestinal tract. Neither the drug nor its metabolites have been recovered from the blood or urine. A laxative, what with the other name is purgatives, is administered prior to niclozamide to avoid the development of cystic sarcosis. And again, I'm asking, what is cystic sarcosis? You know, cystic sarcosis, in cystic sarcosis, there is formation of cyst due to larva of what? Due to larva of oak tapeworm, right? Because when we kill the uh, uh, worm, what will happen? Ova is released, right? From the ova, larva is formed and it can travel and it can reach at the different sites, right? So that is why a exit before uh, uh, giving the niclozamide. So first we clear the intestinal lumen, right? So, right? Then we use the niclozamide. Alcohol should be avoided for 24 to 48 hours. Adverse effects produces few minor side effects, which are infrequent, mild, and transitory. They are nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, headache, skin rashes, itching, and abdominal comfort. So this is all about, so I have mentioned the important points related to this uh, anti-helminthic drugs. So these are the points these are the points what i have discussed with you all these points are exam oriented and if you want to add uh, further points you can go through the book especially uh, either you can use cats in review or lip and cord that would be sufficient more than sufficient uh, for you so at least these are the important points that you must know okay Thank you. This is all about the today's lecture. Thank you very much. Kare, aap sun sakte mujhe? Tarik, baat sunengi? Yes, definitely. Niclozamide, that is also given. In the beginning, I told you all the anti helminthic drugs we use orally, right? Orally. A question is it going to affect normal function of our body? Normally, what we have discussed 
right so if we are using short therapy short course there is no as such remarkable side effects but if we are using uh, the therapy for a prolonged period of time yes it may produce some uh, side effects right so this is the reason and you know the the drug that we are using is poorly absorbed there is no systemic problem systemic toxicity no problem but there are some local gi discomfort that is bearable okay ji thank you okay sir assalam alaikum okay like share kar do ji sir chale thank you so much thank you so much allah hafiz allah hafiz